Shanghai in the 1940s is a city ensnared by chaos. Fierce factions, notably the Axe Gang led by the notorious Brother Sum, vie for dominance. This ruthless gang derives its name from its weapon of choice and strikes terror into all. With law enforcement absent, only the impoverished corners of the city offer fleeting solace, safe from the gang's grasp. One such haven is Pigsty Alley, a tenement housing a diverse community overseen by an amorous landlord and his commanding wife. Enter Sing and Bone, troublemakers who arrive at the alley posing as Axe gang members, aiming to command respect. Their scheme backfires spectacularly, luring the real gang to the scene. In the ensuing colossal brawl, three seemingly ordinary tenants, Cooley, the Twelve Kicks Master, Taylor, the Iron Fist Master, and Donut, the Hexagon Staff Master, defeat over fifty gangsters, revealing their astonishing martial arts prowess. Following the skirmish, Brother Sum apprehend Sing and Bone for their disruptive actions and public humiliation of the Axe Gang. A close call with death is narrowly averted as Sing adeptly picks the locks binding them. Sing appeals to some to grant them membership in the Axe Gang. Intrigued by Sing's lock-picking finesse, some offers them a chance, if they eliminate a single target, they will earn their place in the gang. The next day, Sing and Bone return to Pigsty Alley, targeting the landlady for assassination. Their attempt ends in farcical failure due to their incompetence. As they flee from the enraged landlady, Singh is gravely injured and seeks refuge in a traffic control pulpit. To his astonishment, his injuries miraculously heal as he unconsciously strikes the pulpit steel sides, leaving indelible impressions of his hands. Upon his recovery, Singh rejoins Bone but remains mystified by his inexplicable healing. The two discuss their failure and Singh's past, revealing his aspiration to protect world peace through mastering the Buddhist palm technique. After a tragic incident involving a bullied mute girl and a lollipop, Singh's idealism wanes, pushing him toward a criminal path. The duo's escapades include stealing ice cream and escaping on a tram, their laughter tinged with madness. Infuriated by his gang's defeat, Brother Sum hires the harpists, adept assassins wielding a magical guchin, to strike Pigsty Alley. Under the cover of night, they target the martial arts masters Cooley, Taylor, and Donut, who are facing eviction for antagonizing the gang. The landlord and landlady, concealed kung fu experts of remarkable skill, step in to protect their tenants. Despite driving off the assailants and the axe gang, Cooley, Taylor, and Donut succumb to fatal injuries. The landlord and landlady evacuate Pigsty Alley, prioritizing their tenants' safety. In the aftermath, Singh, having suffered a humiliating beating, resorts to mugging the mute ice cream vendor, who turns out to be the girl from his past. Recognizing her token of gratitude, Singh reacts with a mix of emotions, pushing her away and berating Bone. Singh is later picked up by Axe gang members. Witnessing Singh's lockpicking prowess, Brother Sum assigns him a daring task, infiltrate a mental asylum and free the beast, a fearsome mercenary rumored to be the most lethal person alive. The beast is liberated and transported to the Axe Gang headquarters concealed behind a bustling casino. Yet, his carefree demeanor and disheveled appearance confound some and his henchmen. Their skepticism is quickly quelled when the beast nonchalantly fires a gunshot at his own head, halting the bullet between his fingers. Despite his attention-grabbing feat, the beast's interest shifts away from some towards the landlord and landlady, who have arrived at some's casino to confront him and his gang. A fierce encounter ensues among the three masters. Although initially outmatched, the landlady manages to overpower the beast by shattering the upper portion of a colossal funeral bell and utilizing it as a megaphone to amplify her potent sonic technique, the lion's roar. Wounded, the beast feigns surrender, only to launch a treacherous attack with poison barbs. Although his assault is thwarted, the landlord and landlady must intertwine their bodies with his to neutralize the threat, rendering all three immobilized. Some direct Singh to eliminate the landlady and landlord, but a reformed Singh defends them, repelling some and striking the beast instead. Enraged, the beast breaks free from the hold and unleashes a brutal assault on Singh. Fortunately, just as the beast is about to deliver a fatal blow, the landlord and landlady whisk Singh away unnoticed. In a fit of annoyance, the beast dispatches some and gives chase. Back at Pigsty Alley, Singh, wrapped in bandages and treated with traditional Chinese medicine, undergoes a remarkable transformation. Swift recovery from his injuries reveals his innate potential as a natural-born kung fu genius. He takes on the axe gang with remarkable ease, but the beast proves to be a formidable adversary. The beast's toad technique propels Sing skyward, 
Yet Singh summons the memory of the Buddhist palm technique as he plummets, delivering a colossal blow that flattens the beast and imprints a colossal hand-shaped crater in the earth. The beast feigns surrender again, attempting to strike Singh with his poison barb as he had tried with the landlord and landlady. Undeterred, Singh employs the Buddhist palm technique once more, carving a three-story aperture in the tenement's wall, deliberately avoiding the beast. Dazed, the beast remains immobilized, allowing Singh to disarm him. With faltering words, the beast inquires about the technique Singh employed. Singh offers to teach him, and the beast, overcome with emotion, kneels before Singh, conceding defeat and acknowledging Singh's triumph. In the aftermath, Singh and Bone establish a candy store. When the mute ice cream vendor passes by, Singh warmly greets her. Their encounter rekindles memories of their childhood selves, prompting them to joyfully enter the shop. Meanwhile, the denizens of Pigsty Alley, including the landlord and landlady, are depicted as ordinary members of the community. Beyond the store, the beggar who once sold Singh the Buddhist palm manual now presents an array of martial arts manuals to a young boy savoring a lollipop. I know.